special guest here with me. Hello. Hello. Uh, Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Can you please introduce yourself and tell us where you are now? So I am Alessandro Sharoni. I'm uh, just uh, very close to the place where we just finished the performance. And I'm Francesca Pennini from Collectivo Cinetico. Same place. <laughs> yes, same place, same time. Yeah, backstage basically you are, because you just finished um, the encore performance. So thank you, thank you for joining us. Uh, my first question is for Alessandro. Um, in this piece, you seem to create um, a landscape where the movement is perpetual um, and where you search timeless images through repetition. Can you tell us more about this, this research? Yeah. Well, talking about the landscape, that's also the title of the piece, that it's in a, in a landscape, that is as well the, the title of uh, John Kay's piece from 1948. Uh, we choose uh, to work on a, we choose to work on a, on a very specific skill that is the use of the hula hop. Uh, mm -hmm. Francesca and Collectivo Cinetico uh, asked me to create a project for them, for the company, and uh, I had this idea in my mind, and uh, I proposed them, and I was very happy to uh, to see that uh, how much enthusiastic was the reaction to this proposal. Uh, so the the piece, the music piece of John Cage, was also helping us to discover maybe something different uh, about the use of this tool, about the use of the skill uh, that is normally connected to the cliches that are connected to this, to, to this instrument. Sure, thank you. And um, Francesca, um, I feel there's a very strong uh, energy uh, among the performers. Um, can you tell us more about uh, which state do, do you get to while performing this piece? Because, uh, of course, I guess it requires a lot of focus. And Alessandro, in the introduction to the piece, says that it seems effortless, but it actually uh, requires a lot of effort, also of physical effort. So can you tell us more about this energy? Yeah, well, it's, it's a very interesting practice, this performance. Um, both from a physical point of view of this action that is uh, continuous and perpetuous and uh, it becomes a sort of uh, breath like breathing uh, that you have it's not automatic is uh, you have to put an, um, a constant awareness to it but at the same time it's, a, it's like a layer where you can build on and have uh, other landscapes inside and outside and also from an emotional point of view for me, it's very touching because what Alessandro created is, for me, a sort of um, uh, territory, like a space um, with uh, some rule, but uh, with some principle, with the nature, but that every time requires you to stay in the moment, in the absolute present, in the truth, in the discovery of yourself. And so it... Um, you, you cannot try to find that state. You have to practice like a meditation with those principles and that state arrive. And it's very intense, I have to say. Intense and fragile because uh, like it's, it's so subtle that you don't know if it will happen. You just have to trust it a bit. Great. Um, it's interesting that you say meditation because some of the feedbacks that I had from the audience were all connected also to a certain spirituality of the piece. Um, was it part of the research, uh, you think? Um, or it, was it just something that happened? I go. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, when, when, I think, when, when I think about the piece, what, what I try to do is always not try to avoid to to concentrate the energy on just one layer. And, and if you want to, to work on something that is spiritual, for sure you don't have to look for something that is spiritual. You have to start very far from, from that. So uh, if, you, if you talk about something that is spiritual, for me it's like talking about something that is, 
that can be poetry, that can be poetic. And if you want to find poetry, you cannot look for poetry because you will never find poetry. If you want to look for, for poetry, you have to look for technique, you have to insist, you have to have the skills. And then sometimes when you are practicing and when you are, when you are really in the present moment, maybe sometimes it happens that uh, a little bit of poetry can, can happen sometimes. But, but, but if you start with just that idea, you will never get there. So uh, I really wanted this from this being uh, the other way around, considering the, the way this instrument w w was born during the 50s in America, no? in California, the, the idea of, uh, of, of, of something that, that is to have fun in a way that is the symbol of uh, 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 a positive economic situation, no? And, uh, and now if you see the piece, if you witness the piece, it's really about something else. It's about how fragile we are and how we are always waving to keep this instrument uh, around us. And, uh, and, and, and the first time I saw them trying to learn these skills for me was very moving. So what, what I try to, to propose to the audience is always the first uh, memory that I have about that moment when I first saw them. And, uh, and of course, it's, it's very difficult. It doesn't happen all the time, you know, it's live art. So it doesn't work all the times in the same way. Yeah. Um, what, what about you, Francesca? Um, how, how do you feel while performing it? Uh, apart from this meditation state, uh, do you feel that it already had an impact also on your artistic practice as a collective? I think so. I think so. Um, it's, it's a very specific condition and um, it was for me another way to touch the other, like spiritually also. Um, I see them, I, I love them all because they are my family, like, and I know them very well, but uh, I knew something new with this piece. And then every time we do it is a something secret and somehow telepathic happens and builds up uh, so every time is like uh, adding uh, some little piece that uh, some some something needs to be hidden inside of you and uh, still you trust that is there for the others and i i feel really strong this spirituality that is not mechanical is not something you look for but uh, you listen and then it, it appears something, it appears this poetry. And for my artistic practice, uh, it was incredibly interesting to, um, to work with this uh, approach of Alessandro, uh, from the process uh, to the, the process of being in the piece that still uh, is very alive. Okay. Uh, great, so we are very swiftly moving to the part of the Q&A, so please start clicking on the raise hand button or sending us your questions. And we already have one in the Q&A box. Uh, one of our audience members asked, I was wondering if you could comment on the clothing. What was the idea behind the choice and at what point in the development of the process was it added to the performance? Um. It's very difficult for me to answer to this question because the, the design of the, of the costumes were made from Matole Lombardi, that is the designer that I normally work with in all, in all of my pieces. So we developed during, the, during our practice, we develop a way to work that is, uh, you have a carte blanche. We discuss very little about the costumes. It just comes uh, three or four times to the rehearsals. And, uh, and it builds the costume. And, and of course, I, have, I, I can say what I think, but, but it's, it's like we like to keep it separated. So um, when, he, when, he, when he knew that, that I was working with Colettivo Cinetico, for sure, 
he wanted to create something that was also very far from uh, uh, the, the image of the company and also very far from the cliches of the Ula Ops. So there's not, nothing sporty in that. Uh, they have only uh, love these very beautiful uh, long skirts. There is a little bit of, um, I would say, vintage taste, but not so much. Uh, they are not monks, but, but, but there is something religious in that as well. So. You see, it's the same process. We try to, to, to stay on a level that can have so many, 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 many layers and not, and not just one. That was more or less the, the journey of the design of the costumes. So I see we have someone from the audience to, that joins us. Um, and for all of you who still have questions, if you click raise hand, you will appear live with us. Otherwise, you can use the Q&A box. Hello, uh, can you please tell us your name and where you are now? Hello, uh, I'm Tommaso and I'm speaking directly from Bassano del Grappa, right after the performance. Mm. Please yeah. tell us your question. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for the piece. Uh, I have a question for Alessandro. Uh, could you please tell us something more about the importance of repetition? within your, your work and in relation to this uh, specific piece? Yes, uh, I think that maybe uh, in this piece there is maybe less repetition that, that, that normally I put in my, in my pieces. I don't know, this piece was built just after the lockdown. So there was a lot of tenderness in the way we were meeting to each other and that's, and that's the result. So maybe it's a little bit less obsessive than other pieces that I did. What I really find interesting in uh, repetition uh, is something that maybe is reconnecting, reconnecting, reconnecting in me to my childhood because I remember that when I was very little I was I was like hypnotized by watching this little insect that go all together in the same direction and they make always the same street, the same path. And uh, as a child, I was, I was watching these uh, very slow walks of insects and animals and I was really surprised and uh, I was asking myself like, how do they do that? How, how do they know that where they have to go? And, uh, and so this, this feeling was like hypnotic and uh, mysterious at the same time. So, so as, an, as an audience member, probably I try to propose the same questions without giving an answer. And the question is always, is always why we are insisting, why we are still doing that, why we are repeating that action over and over and over. And after a while you, you forget about the, the action and you just see maybe human beings for a while and for me it's a very moving feeling so that that's what I try to, to create. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Tommaso for joining us. Um, so while we wait for other questions from the audience, um, there's one that popped up in my mind now uh, because Francesca you were talking about the group um, right before and now Alessandro was talking about the animals that he was observing as a child. So I think, um, I mean, I observed that there's a lot also of geometry in this piece. And I kind of felt that it was like displaying or somehow commenting the dynamics of the group. Um, can you tell us more about the dynamic of this group of people that we see on, on stage? Well, I, I feel that the, um, the real life and the professional life are pretty merged together. And um, they influence each other, of course. Uh, so for me, it's very important that uh, the others on stage are people and not dancers. And what fuels and um, um, enriches the action is always life of, of what I know of, about them. So I know it's very specific relation. Uh, they are all people that I know since very long time and from different pathways. So I we 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 all have uh, a lot of roads to connect, but uh, it's very open 
also for me inside. So the action that uh, Alessandro created with us, uh, they're not this, this describing uh, that relation in that way. So it's, it's so open that uh, for me too, that I know the relationship every time I see two hands touching are different uh, reasons that moves the action. Uh, so I don't know if this is the answer of your question. Yeah, but I was also observing that, for instance, at some point, one of them starts using the hula hop in a different way and the others look at them and then start copying it. So there are these breakup moments that cause a little shake into this little community, but then they start to change and follow the new uh, rule, let's say, the new way of moving. Um, so yeah, the dynamics of the groups, whether it is uh, in real life or just stage. Yeah, it's, it's like someone has this little invention or proposal of a, a variation and uh, you discover it through them and so it builds up a new possibility and this we practice it a lot uh, also during the process uh, in sort of uh, structured improvisations so we really discover something through the experiment of one of us and this stayed in the um, in the kind of communication of the piece um, I think also that the fact that we were not hula hop expert or <laughs> practitioners in any way, it's quite important because we really had to discover this and be marveled by the fact that the hula hop goes up now or it can go on the head with this way. And so the feeling of that discovery stayed somehow in the piece. Yeah, because you're also embracing a risk, uh, you know, you are dealing with an object that, I mean, or now you can uh, use pretty well, but it's still a prop. So you have to interact with it. You have to be in dialogue with it um, as well. Um, I'm very grateful that you mentioned, Francesca, the hands touching, um, because I wanted to ask Alessandro if the, um, to tell me more about um, a quote that I saw in the program of the piece. At some point you say that in repetition you find a sort of ultimate, um, let's say, proof of love. Um, can you tell us more about this, like the ultimate act of love in, uh, in repetition? And I find this image of the hands touching and suddenly the hula hoops going at the same time and in the same direction are very moving. I mean, it's, it's, very, it's very difficult for me to, to answer to this question because, uh, uh, as I said, it's not everything that I put there is, is conscious. Uh, it was very interesting today that uh, a group of children came to see a, a little rehearsal of, uh, of the piece. And then at the end, I asked them, uh, so can you tell us what's the meaning of the show? And it's interesting because uh, normally artists hate when uh, someone is asking you, so what does it mean, no? Uh, but I think it's a very honest question and a very, so I, and, and to ask this to the children is very beautiful. So they, they, for, they, I think after they saw the moment of Francesca and Angelo touching the hand and trying to touch the hands, keeping the repetition of the movement, they say, well, it's about someone who, who try to get to get in touch with with someone else, even though it's difficult. And the rest of the piece is about uh, the universe and the planets and the constellations and the system of uh, of each of us. And it's about uh, human beings. And I said, "Wow, yeah, you are you are good, you are right. That is that it's all it's about." And uh, but, but of course, and this is a. Uh, this is a layer that, that, that the child can read and then sometimes when I see, if I'm sad, I see, I see something else. I can see a relationship that I, may, that I might have or, or something that is reminding me, something that happened maybe three years ago. It's not important that the audience is always connected to the performance. If, if, if there are some thoughts that, that pop, pops up and, make, and creates an empathy, 
uh, between mm -hmm. the stage and, and, and the audience. It's, for me, it's, it's, it's participating to an experience, and that's, that's what I like. Great, great. So on these um, words, so important, these core words like empathy and and you know, being a constellation and all these human relationships, I thank you uh, a lot because we ran out of time, but thank you for being so generous during this Q&A. Um, and well, I'll see you soon. <laughs> well, I'll see soon also our lovely viewers. You stay connected because coming up next on Motion on Zoom, we have a lovely conversation, the second video of Motion Connect. Well, the dramaturg Peggy Olislager is going to interview the dance artist Liam Francis. Enjoy. Thank you. Cool. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks. Ciao. <laughs> Love you. <so>. Bye. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs>